watch the way you slug people in the arms when you pass by because it's a love hit. And I said, oh yeah, I just do that. It's just an you know, instinct. I have this thing in my arm that makes me go out and slap people. And, and she said, you have never slapped me. So I made sure, made sure I did. And she was appreciative. Now, there, there is a problem. You know, that y'all are just so diligent making sure you get everything done and you have your checklist and everything. And, and our ushers, they have a checklist on how to close up the church at the end of each Sunday. And they decided that they would close up the church. They did a really good job. And they locked me out of my office. <laughs> and they locked me out of the building. And I didn't have my keys because they locked in my office. <laughs> And my notes about what I was going to say to you are in my office. <laughs> so as I've been listening to all the love going around the room, I've been taking notes in my brain. Just, and what am I going to say? I don't even remember what I wanted to say. Oh no, oh no, I'm overwhelmed. I'm in love with these people. I don't know what to say. I'm, so then I pulled up a card from, that I got yesterday from my brother, Joseph, Joseph and his family, Cheryl and, and Lindsay Rose. They live in Orlando and they could not come up here. So my brother Joe, who's quite unique, he's my hero for many reasons. I'm sorry, Jesse, you're okay. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Joe's just an amazing man. Um, and he wrote me an ode to Rebecca Ball. And I must share it with you. It, it's so much like him, and this is what he said. A very brief ode to Rebecca Ball. Degrees were acquired. Thrice was desired. Thrice was hired. Never was fired. <laughs> Widely admired. And now, retired. <laughs> so many people from the churches I had previously served have been here and that as much as my family, as many of my family members were able to come too and share in this great celebration with probably one of the greatest churches I've ever served. And, and I just want to thank you so much for this feast that we have enjoyed together, an opportunity for us as a community of faith to break bread together. And it's a sacred time and it's just been embedded in my heart and always will be. The last eight years have been eight of the most um, amazing years. They've been so great. And to share in, in this evolution of our faith in, in Wake Forest has just been inspirational beyond means. Oh, I'm breaking out in chili bumps. But it's just, you are awesome. And to allow me to come and be a part of the ministry of Wake Forest Presbyterian Church and be part of the heart of this church has been so inspiring. Yes, when they called and asked if I would come and be their minister, I said no. Why? Because I hate dating games when it comes to finding another church and, and answering the call. I was in conversation with this real snobby church over in um, Williamsburg. Very, they loved themselves. <laughs> Almost so much they couldn't love anything else. So anyway, I knew there was a challenge there. I thought that would be a fun place to go. Well, they turned me down because I wasn't traditional enough. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'll never forget it. My brother Jesse's ordination. He's the other preacher type in the family, a preaching engineer kind of person. And um, at his ordination, there was this guy. He was the pontificating kind of preacher. He had on robes that even the Pope would be envious of. And he, and he had... Um, do you remember that? He had all this fancy embroidered stoles and two pound crosses around his neck and he was quite impressive. He strode up to the pulpit and he said, let us pray. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked up. I was on the front row too. But I, <laughs> that was all right because my little four year old niece, she laughed with me. Really yeah, I pay attention to preachers and I take notes too. <laughs> I can't wait to start visiting other churches. <laughs>
So anyway, it's been wonderful. Can't thank you enough. I want to really thank, um, oh, I was telling the story. <laughs> so when I told Wake Forest Search Committee no to their first attempt to bring me here, I said, I'm in conversation with another congregation, and just to be fair, I don't want anything else to be placed in front of me. I want to consider each church in its own right. And then I said something I never say. I said, if that doesn't work out, I will call you back. And so we parted on the phone call, and Derek came in, and he said, what did you say? <laughs> you said if it didn't work out, then you were going to call them back? I said, well, yeah. And then it dawned on me what I had done, and I was going to have to call you back. <laughs> I did not meet their current pastoral needs. Well, I was fine with that because I thought they were too snotty anyway. Mm. Not that I'm judging. <laughs> <laughs> so I called them back. And look what happened. I'm just so grateful. That was so great. Anyway, let me go on. I want to thank the Franks. They were our first home when we came to Wake Forest. They know what hospitality is. And why we haven't asked them to serve as chair of the hospitality ministry, I don't know. <laughs> if there's anybody here on the nominating committee, just take note of that. <laughs> I really want to thank um, Vivian Jones, the mayor of Wake Forest itself. She has um, always been such a, a warm personality and was one of the first people to greet me in the community. And I have cherished her friendship. And I'll never forget our daughter's first trip to Wake Forest. And, and Vivian was walking toward us, and so I stopped and I introduced our daughter to Vivian as our mayor. And she said, Mom, you know the mayor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Even then. And then I, um, Trinity is fabulous. Brandon, oh my, 17 years worth. Wake Forest. Bruce McVeigh was the, was the elder for finance in Brandon. And it was his understanding of what it means to be generous with every aspect of who we are as Christians that renewed my hope in churches just to say, oh, they don't need my money. <laughs> Silly people. <laughs> don't you believe in the work of the Lord? Don't you want to support the avenue, the church through which that ministry is realized, through which lives are transformed in Christ and strengthened for your daily walk and to have a whole family of God walk alongside you in times of dire crisis and grief and heaviness to bear. And they did. What a great church Brandon First Church was. Trinity, my first church, had such an amazing mentor through Frank Bell. And I'm just thrilled that we have representatives from that church. People who are part of the first covenant group, the first small group that I was, being, was able to be a part of. And how we learn to love the Lord more through loving each other. So if somebody invites you to a small group, say yes. Because you will be blessed beyond measure. Which will make you to be a blessing for others. What an opportunity. It's going to be great. <laughs> it is. And then, I want to, I want to um, thank Ed Moffat Turner. You all don't know how important Moffat was to this congregation. Going through that wilderness time, oh my word, she and Joel Alvis, remember them? They got along with each other, and they loved each other, and for loving each other, they loved you. It was fabulous. blessed to have the opportunity to work with Moffat for nine months, in my first nine months. Oh gosh, we had a great time, didn't we? We talked about y'all and we laughed at y'all. It was just that. It was, it was wonderful. And Ed, he's just hilarious. He'd come to those meetings at the Presbyterian meeting, and I just want to tell you, yes, I asked every last one of those um, preacher wannabes the question that he said I asked. And how are you and Jesus getting along? Or this, why do you love Jesus? And half of them are floored 
Nobody had ever asked him that before. And I want you to do me proud. And then whenever anybody says, Wake Forest, Presbyterian, you can say, that's where I learned to love Jesus. And then tell them why. Share your story. The transformation that wakes you up in the morning, that lets you realize that God is always with us, regardless of whatever insanity we have to face in a given day. They will know we are Christians by how we face adversity. They'll know we are Christians by how we celebrate the joy together. And don't miss that opportunity. And I want to recognize Andrea Rock. Andrea Rock, I was privileged to be her shepherd in, in the Committee on Preparation for Ministry. Um, those who are preacher wannabes, they are assigned a shepherd, and they're called sheep. <laughs> and I had the biggest crook in the whole thing. And I was so privileged to have Andrea be my, my sheep. And Andrea was already retired when she started the process. Can you imagine? And oh my word, such an inspiration. Such a loving heart. Going to a church that she thought she was being asked to go and help close. And yet, it thrives because of the love of Jesus. That you just lay out on them and they can feel it. And then I have this amazing staff. Somebody said that when the preacher's gone and giving is down, that the staff is the first to go. I'm so sick of those kind of assumptions. They're, they're dangerous and they're false. This church has always come forward when it is needed the most. Our staff are the heartbeat of our ministry, of our training, of our preparation, of our love for one another. So just pay attention and hold on tight for all the amazing things that God is doing through them and through you. Kim, our music mama, she, I told her I wouldn't do this because she's going to freak out a little bit, but you know, we're coming out of this COVID thing, and she's been so creative with all the choir ministries that we have, and in making sure we had music on Sundays, tele telegraph or whatever we do, that stuff for technology, <laughs> and she, you can feel it, she grew in enthusiasm for what music can do in the life of a church. And she's taking names of people who really want to be part of the singing. It helps if you carry it, too. <laughs> and to be part of that ministry as we move forward, bringing harmony and unity of voices that bind our hearts together. Music in this church is the cushion upon which the gospel message can be placed and heard and received in love. So support the music ministry of this church. We've got to have more harmony in this world. And then, Moffat quoted from that passage in Philippians 1. I was going to say that. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I'm going to read the whole thing. She only hinted at some of it. But let me tell you, this is y'all. This is y'all. And I'm, I'm writing the letter to you. I thank my God every time I think of you. Constantly praying with joy in everyone of my prayers, all my prayers, for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day I came until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think of you this way because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me 
in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer. <clears throat> that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.